Free select. Free select can be found with the lasso button in the toolbar, or you can go tools, selection tools, free select. You can also just press F. Free select works like following. You click places, make a surrounding shape, then press enter, and that region is selected. We're covering additive and subtractive mode. So if I have a selection made, if I go to additive mode, then I make a new selection. Instead of replacing the current selection, which is the default setting, it adds to the selection. Now the reverse of this is obviously subtractive mode. And if you do that and surround a region, that subtracts from the current selection. So that's additive and subtractive mode. Next, I have by color select. So if I click by color and I click the white, that selects all the white uh, because I selected all the color white. Now I can change the threshold here and then that will make a closer match. Uh, you know, greater the threshold means more colors included in the color selection. So that is by color selection. But you notice it also selected this. Well, to get rid of that, that's pretty easy. I would just go to free select, go to subtractive mode, surround the area that I don't want selected. And then there you go. Now the sun is selected by color select and by subtractive free select. Next, we're going to be covering so, uh, selecting the inverse and selecting none. So if I want to select the inverse of the selection, so rather than these two random patches, I can say select invert. That's also a command I on Mac. And that selects the inverse. So now everything but those is selected. Okay, the and also an important tool is select none. So if you say select, well, I'll select all as well. So select none, that's command shift A, and that selects nothing. You can also select everything by saying command A for select all. I'm gonna finally get rid of my background here. So I have my sun selected. It's really easy to mask out the background. You click the mask button and initialize that to the selection press add, now the background of the sun has disappeared because it has been masked out. Now it's really easy to adjust this mask. So taking a look at the mask, so if I hold down option or alt and click the mask, you can see the mask itself. We see the object where it's white. We do not see the object where it's black. And you can imagine what gray does. But anyways, let's say I wanted to hide part of this. So if I click my brush, okay, and I paint, part of this selection black. Do you see how that now disappears? Okay, wherever I paint black disappears. And let's take a look at that layer mask again. Do you see where it's painted black? It's no longer visible. That's layer masks in a nutshell. Okay, we're gonna talk about saving. So it doesn't matter what's selected and what layers are visible. It doesn't really matter, but we can save it or export it like the following. So if I press save as, I'm going to save an XCF file. This is not an image file. It's a GIMP file, but I can save it as an XCF file. And that keeps my layers and my masks and everything like that editable and all good. But I can also export it because let's say I want to put it on the internet. I would say export as. And here I can just change the file type by changing here. Now JPG would not work in this case because JPEGs don't have background, transparent backgrounds. Whereas PNGs do. So you want to change this to .png on your desktop and press export. Um, I've already done this one, so it's just replacing. But long story short, leave these settings as they are. Don't mess with these settings. Just press export. And now that is exported. So in today's video, we exported and saved. That's it. Layer manipulation. So if I take a picture into GIMP, like this picture of the pyramids. I'll just say convert on that option. And this picture will show up. I can then take PNGs, preferably without backgrounds, and drag them in, again, just saying convert when it asks for the option, and add them to the picture just by dragging them on. I can also drag add layers, so I can say open as layers and select the files that way. Now, let's just change these objects a little bit. So I can move them with the move tool around, okay? Now, obviously, you got to select the right object. So right now, the Earth is below the sun. How to change that order? Well, in the layer panel, if I just change the order, I can now put the sun behind the Earth. And that was layer manipulation right there. 
Uh, the other thing that we can do, just make sure you select the correct layer. And if you want to scale this, you can press Shift S or say Tools, Transform Tools, Scale. And then you can scale that object however you so wish. If you hold down the Shift button, you can even change its proportions. Okay, so that's Shift S to scale. You can also move things at scale too, which is nice. Okay, so again, make sure you select the right layer. So if I press Shift S, I can scale the Earth and change its position and do all that. I can also change layer orders. Now if I put this guy on top, you won't see the other ones because it's on top of it. And that's all layer manipulation.